posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. It doesn't have to be encephalopathic, it does not have to be reversible, and it does not have to be posterior to be pressed. However, we're going to talk about the classic version, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. The way that this comes to me as an ophthalmologist is press can affect the occipital lobes. So it can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. So that means it can produce a homonymous hemianopsia or cortical blindness. There are many causes of press. The most common ones are elevation of blood pressure, malignant hypertension, hypertensive urgencies and hypertensive emergencies, and in pregnancy, eclampsia. But also medications can cause it, including immunosuppressive therapies like tacrolimus. There are other causes too, but these are the most common. It is reversible because the type of edema that we see on MRI scan, and that edema is seen on T2, is vasogenic edema in press rather than cytotoxic edema as in stroke. So all of these mechanisms, hypertension, eclampsia, and immunosuppressive agents have a common mechanism of breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. And when you have breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, more water can come out of the blood vessel. And we call that type of edema vaso from the vessel genic genesis. So vasogenic edema is the type of edema that is associated with breakdown of the blood-brain barrier and press. And the way we can see that on imaging is, even though both vasogenic edema from the vessel and cytotoxic edema, cytocell toxic uh, death or illness, cytotoxic edema and vasogenic edema both produce increased T2 signal, in this case in the occipital lobe. But the DWI, the diffusion weighted imaging, can help us establish whether we are dealing with restricted diffusion from cytotoxic edema or just increased amounts of water from vasogenic edema from breakdown of blood-brain barrier. So in patients with cytotoxic edema, the cells swell up and that restricts the movement of the water and that restricted diffusion is seen as hyperintensity on DWI and associated hypointensity on ADC. So it'll be bright on DWI and dark on ADC if it's restricted edema. Uh, diffusion of water in cytotoxic edema, and that might be unreversible or irreversible. In contrast, if it's just vasogenic edema, either the DWI is normal, or the DWI and the ADC are both hyperintense, and that's T2 shine through. So if it just shines through all the sequences, bright on T2, bright on DWI, and bright on ADC, that is more suggestive that it is vasogenic edema, and in the right clinical setting, hypertension, eclampsia, or meds, that's more likely to be a posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome.